welcome to the Jet Setter Show, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. Enjoy and learn from a variety of experts on topics ranging from upscale travel at wholesale prices to retiring overseas, to global real estate and business opportunities, to tax havens and expatriate opportunities. You'll get great ideas on unique cultures, causes, and cruise vacations. Whether you're wealthy or just want to live a wealthy lifestyle, The Jet Setter Show is for you. Here's your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to The Jet Setter Show. This is Jason Hartman, your host, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. I think you'll enjoy the interview we have for you today, and we will be back with that in less than 60 seconds here on The Jet Setter Show. It's my pleasure to welcome Will Ashcroft to the show. He is the CEO of JumpJet, a unique way to fly private. Will, welcome. How are you? Jason, well, thanks so much for having me this afternoon. Good. So tell us about JumpJet and what makes it unique. Well, uh, JumpJet essentially affords the current airline traveler who's frustrated with their uh, airline experience the ability to fly on a private jet for either the same price they're paying or less. And we have today membership packages that whether you're a flexible sort of baby boomer that has lots of time on your schedule to a busy executive that enable you to fly on a private jet at a cost that is uh, incrementally 90% less than the the price of traditional charter. It's a big leap from flying business or first class to flying private, even on the shared private jet programs that I've seen out there. So tell me about yours specifically. I mean, these are people who have jets who probably want to put them to work and make sure they're making money while they're sitting, right? It's it's not the deadhead flight, is it? Absolutely, absolutely correct. Uh, and and that's that's an important uh, distinguisher in 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 jump jets model, is that we we rarely use empty legs. We're very much about booking the charter, about setting up the charters plural in an efficient manner, which is how we're able to afford people this wonderful value proposition. We're not about getting the empty leg and or canceling the empty leg. Uh, We're very much about bringing the aircraft in from a charter program and setting it up in such a way that it's it's efficient. We are not for the person who has an interest in commanding the jet, telling the jet what time and where it will be, calling from the golf course or dinner and extended it, extending the the aircraft. Uh, We're very much about um, a set of rules that enable us to offer this value proposition. So you fly with other members. You once you accept the reservation, you are locked in, and once that reservation is locked in, we already know the efficiencies, and so therefore we go into the marketplace uh, with uh, the very safe charter operators that we use, and we book the aircraft. So I won't say we never, but we very, very rarely use the empty legs because we found them not to be good for us. So why are they not good though? The empty legs. Well, quite often, uh, an empty leg becomes the victim of its principle, um, so that if it's posted and it's available one minute, it can quite often get taken away by the person who owns or has has the uh, management of that aircraft. And so if you get your customers lined up and it gets taken away, you have unhappy customers. And uh, also, there are so many of these empty legs posted quite often in real time, it's hard to translate them into, into a... an actual trip. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, I found that to be true, too. So, you know, I almost hate to bring up sometimes the name of a, a potential competitor, but what's the difference between you and, say, Black Jet? Ah, the wonderful friends at Black Jet, yes. Well, um, Black Jet are uh, very much uh, a, a per-seat entity in the sense that, as I understand their model, and I don't live on their website every day, nor do I follow everything they do. So you have to give me a bit of leeway here if I'm slightly off. But my understanding is you you pay a membership fee, which I believe is in excess of $2,000 to join them. Ours is only $550. Um, but then you you make your booking, and they have to get a certain number of people on their plane. Um, and then they move the plane. Um, whereas whether we have one or 15 people, 
uh, we we book the aircraft, we book the trip, and that trip uh, is and, happening, so you can depend on it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, Black Jet are a, a, a you know wonderful company. I mean, I think the yeah, you know, what's wonderful about Jump Jet and Black Jet is that that we both realize there is a a an absolute need for this service. And I think that, you know, we've been around for the longest. I'm actually credited with being the person that invented this space in 2006. So our depth of understanding of the market is perhaps a little deeper than some others out there. Um, but I think to both of our credits, you know, some venerable names have come into this space, faltered and gone, whether it's the likes of Virgin Charter, Dayjet, uh, and, and others along the wayside. So I think, you know, the market is large enough, for, certainly for, for both of us. Uh, and we both have a a different take on on the uh, on the space, so to speak. Okay, so let's look at an example here, if we can. You have three membership plans: the Upper Club, the Upper Club Plus, and the Coast to Coast Elite. So none of these are going out of the continental U.S. It looks like, right? Uh, today, that's correct. Right. Okay. So with the the starting program, it's twenty eight thousand dollars a year, and you get ten guaranteed round trip flights within your own and a and a neighboring time zone and up to seven guests for fifteen hundred dollars each so how does that pencil i mean i mean let's look at an example of of how that really pencils out for example take me if if i want to leave from scottsdale air park in in phoenix arizona which is a little private airport that a lot of private jets go in and out of where would i fly and how would it how would it look well, what's nice about the jump jet model in terms of the time zones, you know, at that 28,000 range, you can go from, I believe, uh, and, and I always get confused with Arizona, but I'm guessing you guys are on Pacific time. Well, at this time the, the, the thing that should be so non-confusing about Arizona is that we don't do that silly thing of changing our time. Okay. <laughs> well, in fact, <laughs> all, all of you guys should not change your clocks, too. It's a really yeah, great that, system. Okay, well, we'll leave time zone politics for another time. Right, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I've got a few few views on that for the rest of the world myself. But it's uh, it's very much about if you look at what those airlines cost you in terms of flying to that next time zone. So if you had to fly into it within your time zone, I mean, just, just look at where you can go from, from Phoenix to, say, Seattle or to Los Angeles or San Francisco. But what's nice is you can also go into the mountain time zone. So Aspen, Denver, um, I believe Kansas City is even in that time zone. So it's, it's really when one weighs that up and, and one looks at what your needs are and, and what is absolutely key for, for potential jump jet customers is our flexible plan starts at $1,500 for the same membership you've just mentioned. And our executive plan goes up to uh, 11000 Now, these numbers, you might seem low, might seem high. Well, when it costs $44,000 to go round trip on a private jet, uh, from New York to Los Angeles, eleven thousand is 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 very considerable in terms of good value for your money. Uh, when you look at the price of, say, Southwest Airlines, Business Select, and I use Southwest frequently, one can pay eleven hundred dollars to go round trip. So our our price point is not you know really out of the touch of of the the general traveling public. So if you live in Phoenix and have a need to to travel, whether it's for business or complete leisure, and have flexibility, uh, our membership programs can get you to a number of destinations. And next year, uh, when we introduce our our new soon to be announced uh, individual class. You don't have to be a member, and the prices will be as low as four hundred and fifty dollars round trip. So, I'm I'm very excited by you know, both what we're doing now and what we have coming down the pike. Okay, so let's take this example again. So twenty eight hundred dollars if you take the upper club membership, twenty eight hundred dollars per year. So it's twenty eight hundred dollars per flight. So no, twenty eight thousand for the year. Right. And, sorry, twenty eight thousand per year. Yep. So I'm dividing by ten. So yep. that's twenty eight hundred per flight. Mm -hmm. So how do how does one make that pencil though? I mean, the other examples you gave sounded pretty attractive uh, in terms of price. But how tell us about how this pencils out? I mean, twenty eight hundred dollars to go to Aspen and back round trip is uh, pretty expensive. 
Well, it, it, it might be considered expensive. Um, and obviously, our, our yet to be announced program is is bringing the prices even further down. But when you compare that that trip in a private jet probably would cost you around 21000 2800 is definitely a value. Is it for everyone? No. But I think everyone has to start somewhere. Yeah, I'm very proud that in the last six years, Jump Jet has spent a lot of time re- researching where our business model will go from $500 all the way up to $55,000. And so I think that, you know, while we're not for everyone, and you bring up a very good point that we aren't for everyone, the experience of flying private has to have a value. Oh, sure it to. does. Yeah. I'm not saying it should be the same as Southwest, but that was your comparison, not mine. <laughs> well, no, but, but my Southwest comparison kicks in with, um, you know, when, when uh, for example, if you look at, at say, uh, our, and again, I, our, our new program rollout next year is a bit of, an, a, bit of a, a hush hush at this moment. But you know, when you look at Southwest the other day, I was 553 round trip from Albuquerque to New York, excuse me, each way. So it was just, just about, um, including taxes, about $1,100. If, if I give someone the ability to do that for 450 or 750 or even 1100 round trip, you know, that's, that's really breaking over the price point. I do agree with you that t- uh, 2800 or even 5500 for New York to L.A., we're not for everyone, but we certainly do compare. You know, the first class prices change so often. Uh, but when you look at the averages over the course of a year with most major carriers, our value proposition is spot on with uh, the term, you know, fly private for the price of first. The other, the other thing is, is quite important to point out is that the airlines don't say, ah, you're taking someone else, we'll give you a discount. They say you're taking someone else, the price is going to be the same. And certainly with young children, I think it is absolute madness the way that the airlines charge you know, full price for a two-year-old. And as a father, I, I, my, my, my customers frequently say to me, you know, will you raise that price as your kids get older? And the answer is yes, because I'm the first to, to look across the aisle and say, this is mad that my little daughter who, who takes up a fraction of space is paying full fare. You know, but again, our, our, we can't be all things to all people. But in the last year, first class prices have been as high as 3500 uh, on American Airlines from New York to Florida. Uh, and when I called to find out just how many seats they sold, she says, well, believe it or not, we do sell seats and you have to go via Dallas to get to Florida. So, yeah, I think um, when one looks at the average and the frustration, uh, which goes away with flying private, yeah, you know, we've uh, we've really created something very special here. Well, okay, so it's fifteen hundred dollars for each guest, right? Correct. Unless you're on the coast to coast program, then it's two thousand, and you're limited to three. Oh, sorry, two thousand five hundred for coast to coast. For coast to coast, correct. So you must really keep these planes fairly full, right? No, uh, I mean we. I, I mean, we... limited to three, for example. We well no, it's limited to three guests. So if you have a fifteen passenger aircraft, you know we we don't fill every seat. Uh, we do try and take into account that not every private jet was created equal, and some have you know sofas. Some have some even consider a a seat belt on a toilet uh, a seat. And right, I've had a number of a, 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 a jump seat. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, if someone said the other day, you know, if you started using that, you could say fly jump jet and go flush. But um, I don't, I don't think that would go down too terribly well with <laughs> with our customers. So we we try and be very cognizant when we're sizing the trips as we bump up against the the national average. I'll say. So if you look at say a Hawker. Uh, 850 XP that says it can seat nine. Well, that might be you know six individual seats and three on a sofa. Well, if you don't know everyone you're flying with, that can be awkward on a sofa. So we make every effort to try and, as we bump up against the naf- national average, try and reduce down those numbers and make sure that we're not packing nine people onto a nine passenger plane. And one person says, well. It did flush. <laughs> are, are, are you flying any of the very light jets like the Cessna Citation Mustang? Certainly, I think the Eclipse would be too small, what's left of Eclipse. But, you know, the Citation, the Phenom, the very light, the Phenom 100 is a very light jet. Yeah, the Phenom and the Citation are wonderful products, but they are small. Um, and so on occasion, we will, if we know we have, say, two, possibly three people that know each other, 
and there's a real reason to use that aircraft. We will look at using those aircraft, but they're very awkward aircraft to put total strangers on. And also they're very limited in their baggage. Most private jets are limited in their baggage, but they're they're especially limited. And you know, they have a very niche market, both made by incredible manufacturers and who have put a lot of thought and effort. But I think they went one step too far in terms of size. So I personally would rather see someone go on a King Air than I would in one of the very light jets. Right, just right. Okay, well, that that's a good example. Do you fly a King Air? We do. Uh, on occasion, we use a King Air. Sometimes we really have to have an intimate discussion with our customer because you, the country believes that a propeller is dangerous. And what most people don't realize is that a um, uh, a, a jet turbine engine is as safe as it, – it's a jet engine just with right. a propeller. Yeah, right. And it's especially a the King Air you know, flies the wonderful Pratt & Whitney PT6 engine. So – on occasion, we do have some some convincing to do, but we we t- typically will use a King Air on on some of the shorter legs, um, on some of the you know, if we know we've got someone going into. Yeah, I, um, I got the idea. Yeah. Um, so uh, are, are are your planes all dual pilot? Because in the VLJs, you can fly single pilot, and I believe you can do that for charter. I'm not sure, but I think so. You are you you we do not. Uh, you're absolutely right about the VLJs and even some of the citations you can fly single pilot, but it is very, very rare. And I would not subscribe to my customers being on a plane that didn't have two pilots. Okay, so you're all you're all dual pilot. Okay, good. Anything else you want us to know in closing, Will? And please give out the website jumpjet.com. Fairly yeah, obvious. <laughs> I mean, you can find us at, at uh, jumpjet.com. Thank you, uh, Jason, for that. Um, you can also see us uh, on uh, Jumpjet TV on YouTube. And our first issue of, uh, of uh, Jump, the magazine, will be coming out um, in a few weeks. So I encourage folks to, to go onto our website and register for that. And just, you know, that it is exciting times. I think, you know, for Jumpjet, um, we are the leader by far in the market space. Uh, we're, we're setting a standard that I think is very exciting. And I'm, I'm looking very forward very much as our plans grow and our markets grow to what comes down uh, the road for us in, in the next 24 months. Fantastic. Will Ashcroft, thank you so much for joining us today. The website is jumpjet.com. Jason, thank you so much for your time. This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company, all rights reserved. For distribution or publication rights and media interviews, please visit www.hartmanmedia.com or email media at hartmanmedia.com. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and the host is acting on behalf of Platinum Properties Investor Network, Inc. exclusively.